Hi, I'm Richard Randall, and welcome to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, the owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. This is the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with Colorado's real estate authority, Barb Schlinker. Barb is a retired Navy veteran. Barb is an author. Barb Schlinker is a pilot, and Barb and her team enjoy all the Colorado and the Front Range have to offer barb always great to be talking with you now we air your real estate voice every saturday right after larry kudlow and if you can't listen to the entire show it is always available on barb's site barbhasthebuyers.com or just look for it on a podcast spotify iHeartRadio, and many many others barb what are we talking about today well richard i'm excited about today's show because um, I try to tailor the show more towards what people are asking about real estate. And I found some great online tools that can help me find out what the questions are. So the first one we're going to cover, which I get a lot of requests through my website about people's home value. They want a better idea of what their home is worth. So we're going to kind of deep dive into how do they find out what their Colorado home is worth and the information that I use to help them make good decisions about um, where to position their home price-wise when they go on the market. And then the second one, we're going to kind of deep dive into cash buyers. It's a common question because people get stuff in the mail, they get phone calls, they get text of, I have a cash buyer that wants to buy your home. I met with a seller yesterday and they came in, I think the cash offer was like, at least 30 percent less than its current market value so when they told me what the offer was i said wow <laughs> that's a great deal um but anyway so we'll talk about why cash buyers could be better or not for home sellers and then we're also going to talk about whether or not mortgage rates are going to go down into 2024. we a lot of the experts out there are predicting different things so we'll deep dive into that and then the very last thing is, that I think something that um, home sellers kind of fear, they wonder if an agent sitting there telling them their home is worth X is either undervaluing the price just to get a quick sale or worse yet, inflating the price in order to get them to sign on the dotted line, but it may not, it may not be the right price where the home is going to sell. And they know that they just want to get a contract with the client. So we'll kind of talk about that in lots of detail. And as always, I love talking about my hot new listings. Richard? Barb, a lot of people look at their online value on places like Zillow or even tax valuations to guess at their home's value, but they really don't know for sure. I think most folks want the most money they can get for their homes. So how can a home seller find out more accurately what their home is really worth? Well, it's interesting when I ask home sellers what they think their home is worth. Um, how close they are to the number. They're pretty close in most cases. But with that knowledge, wh whatever they're using, it could be um, going up on Zillow, which I wouldn't rely on that one. I don't think it's accurate um, even half the time or more. I wouldn't rely on Realtor.com. Realtor.com has a little a screenshot of three different automated valuations that could range as much as $100,000 between them. And you can't really rely on tax valuations. The most recent tax assessment, if you go into the assessor site, you can click in and see how much they raised your taxes last year. And it was based on the prices back when the market peaked, back when the rates were still 3%, in June of 2022. And since that time, the rates have gone all the way up to eight and then waggled around in the sevens and sixes. So it's a different value back then as to what it is right now. So you can't rely on that either. And then um, I've even had some people ask me, should I go out and actually get a formal appraisal from a licensed appraiser? And I don't much think much of that idea either because an appraiser basically is looking backwards at historic sales. It's very um, data driven, but it may not be buyer driven, if that makes sense. Like I had one seller one time that had gotten an appraisal, they, they were taking some cash out. So they'd just gotten a cash out appraisal, but the home ended up selling 
for $300,000 less than what the appraisal was. So I don't think you can rely on that either. You need to take a look, a look at a lot of different things to figure out what your home is worth. And you can't rely on automated things. That's why I really don't believe real estate is ever going to be 100% an online thing. I know from my own experience of buying a home recently that, you know, the pictures online looked amazing. But then when you get to the house, it's like, oh, <laughs> maybe not so much. We're not going to look at that one. But you also have to look at the current market trends. That is a huge factor in determining what price your home will sell for. And, you know, I have some, I have an account with the asset management company that handles all of the properties that were taken back by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs in foreclosures. Very sad to see that happen, but they like hiring veteran agents because it, it helps them. Um, but it does happen. Sometimes those veterans cannot uh, make payments for whatever reason. So the bank forecloses. Now, the way the veteran benefits work, they can go out and buy any home they want as long as they qualify, no money down. So their mortgage insurance for that is typically anywhere from 2 to 3% of the loan amount gets tacked on to the loan. And that's basically just foreclosure insurance that protects the veteran. It doesn't protect the veteran. It protects the lender from if the borrower forecloses, the government gives the lender all their money back and then the government takes ownership and possession of the home. So it's really um, interesting, but, but they are very good at pricing and selling homes and they sell them quickly. They're excellent at this. I have one that's selling right now. I gave my opinion of value. They also hire a licensed appraiser to give an opinion of value. And the price that they decided to price this home was actually probably, I believe, 10% below what the current market value is. And sure enough, it sold for about 10% more than asking price uh, at full market value. And they do it and they do it quickly. So they're very good at this. Um, that's why I always suggest to sellers that it's best to price what I call realistically versus optimistically. And, you know, the forecast and the current market conditions are that the inventory is going to stay low. And so even though it's a little bit more of a buyer's market, it's actually kind of between sellers and buyer's market. You know, back during the, um, the boom, say 20, late 2020, 2021, and the beginning of 2022, Home sellers had the benefit of super uber unusual low inventory at the same time that rates were very, very low. So there was um, a, lo a lot more people could afford homes in that environment. So what happened is it really quickly drove up prices as multiple buyers made offers on almost every property. And um, so at that time, the sellers could really push the price envelope. There were a couple of times when the seller says, I want this much. And I'm thinking, there's no way that the data won't work. And sure enough, they got it. But that was an anomaly. OK. And even though now, since the rates have gone back up, we're still in a low inventory market because of what they call the golden handcuffs. There's a lot of people right now that are sitting on, if they have a mortgage, two and a half, three percent mortgage. And it's going to be more expensive for them to sell and upgrade or downsize their home. So a lot of people are just staying put. So we anticipate the inventory is going to stay low for a long time. But it shouldn't be the reason to overprice a home because it just won't work. Now, some of this low inventory is uh, seasonality. So what we saw last year, what we're also seeing this year is any time from right now going all the way through May, inventory is going to be low. And it won't start kicking up until the summer because a lot of people like moving in the summer. But the amount of homes available for sale a year ago as compared to right now are almost the same. Um, and so that's what we're going to see going into the future. And that's why I think the spring is actually a great time to sell a home because there's fewer homes to compete against as a home seller. And typically you can command the most money. I even found a chart that substantiated that, that anywhere from March through June, you're going to really capitalize on the best time to sell. And also in the fall, which did not take place last fall. 
simply because the rates went right up to 8% and it created a whole bunch of demand destruction for buyers. You know, once the rates go up, they can't afford it. So just looking at values in the area, I'm going to kind of run down. It's got a lot of data, but I'm going to run down what the values are doing right now in Colorado Springs and some of the other local areas, because I know the station has a big, broad reach. Um, but just looking at Colorado Springs market, the median price on January 5 of 2024 was 517. Here we are mid-February, it's all, all the way up to 530. So it went up, you know, $13,000 in just one month. That's pretty good. That's like 3%. Um, and we're seeing the inventory being low. Areas out east in Peyton, we're kind of seeing the same numbers across the board. We're seeing low inventory and the prices are heading back up. Even down in Pueblo, right now, the median list price for a home in Pueblo is about 300 uh, new listings, about 375,000. Um, but the inventory is super low. The average days on market pretty much across the board is two to three months. But if you price it right out of the gate, it definitely could be um, could be uh, quicker than that. And the inventory is on the rise and some of that is season. Woodland Park, uh, another area where right now the median list price is down a little bit to be about 580. Average days on market are sitting right at uh, 128. Some of that is seasonal. We know all the Texans love coming to Teller County in, um, in the summertime because it's just so beautiful up there. So even though our inventory is low, I anticipate that the prices are going to be kicking up going into the summer in that area. Same with fluorescent, median price in the mid fives, inventory super low, very few people reducing their price and the prices are heading up. That's why when you put your home on the market, you need to make sure you get all the four P's right, preparation, pricing, picking the right Asian agent and promoting your home. And, um, my name is Barb Schlinker. I'm the broker owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty and the host of this show, Your Real Estate Voice. And we're talking about what a home seller can find out, uh, more accurate information about what their home is valued at. And next up, we're going to tell you how we get that right. If you are thinking of making a move, give us a call anytime, 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Richard? Barb, we're discussing how home sellers get more accurate information about their home's value. So how does a home seller know if they've got their pricing just right? Well, if they're all already on the market, you can tell right away by the volume of showings. If you're getting lots of showings, you're probably really close to being priced right. And just give it time. There's going to be some buyer that loves it. Um, if you're getting very few showings, you're off on your pricing. So that's how you know. And when you are getting feedback, a lot of sellers are emotionally hurt by some of the negative feedback that they get from other agents. Like I had one agent recently put in a written feedback that this home has too many bumps and bruises for my client. And I'm like, that is just tactless in my view. You know, if it wasn't the right home for them, just say it. But you don't have to hurt their feelings. But that's... It, it, it's just what happens. Let it roll off your back because there's somebody that's going to love it. Not every home is for every buyer. I had this saying um, that uh, one of my first brokers used to always say at meetings, which I thought was really cute. He'd say, there's a puppy for every doghouse, which I thought was cute. Not that they're doghouses, but it's true. You know, sometimes people get surprised at, at at least agents get surprised at what homes their buyers are going to pick. If, if it's the love word, let them buy it. Don't get in their way, you know? So if you are thinking of making a move, we offer a free in-home consultation. We'll give you tips on what to do, what not to do to get your house ready for sale, give you a really good idea what your home will sell for, show you all of our buyers that we can present to your home, including our exclusive buyers in waiting, our buyers on Zillow and Realtor.com, our citywide buyer agent net network, as well as our guaranteed sale program and our worry-free move up program. So if you are thinking of moving, give us a call 719-301-3900. Or if you're interested in your home value, you can go to barbhasthebuyers.com, click on the yellow button that says get home value and you'll get really good data from us that a human actually does um, it, it, within a day or so, you'll receive it in your inbox. Richard? 
You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker. That's Barb. She's the host of the program and Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. She's the owner proprietor of that as well. If you're thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301-3900 or visit barbhasthebuyers.com, a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about why are cash buyers better for selling a house? Stay tuned for that. 